This is the plaintiff, Amy. She says the defendant is her ex of five years, and he refuses to reimburse her for half of the utility bills from the house they once shared. Bottom line, it's time for him to grow up and pay her the $842.10 she's owed. This is the defendant, Timothy. He says the plaintiff is a woman scorned and is just mad he broke up with her. She knows he doesn't owe her money for these utility bills, and soon the judge will know it too. He's accused of turning off an ex. All parties, please raise your right hands. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Amy, you and Mr. Timothy dated for how long? Uh, almost six years. Okay. And were you living together? Uh, we did the last year of our relationship, yes. All right. At some point during that last year, you guys end up no longer really being an item, correct? Correct. What happened? What was the reason for the breakup? Um, he had an issue with my relationship with my two older children and ex-husband. Um, I have a really good relationship with my ex-husband and we co-parent and he didn't like it and had a problem with it. So it caused tension in the relationship and I had gotten to a point I had enough. Um, the breaking point was in uh, November for Thanksgiving when uh, I had Thanksgiving at my ex-husband's with my kids and other people were there and Timothy was invited, but it was a whole issue. and. Um, he was invited or he wasn't invited? He was invited. Okay. All right. So I'm trying to envision, I'm trying to picture what it's like you're it, it, living in this apartment with him. And is the lease under both of your names? Yes. The lease was in both our names and it was a house. And how were you splitting the bills? 50-50? Yes. Okay. At some point you move out of the bedroom you're sharing with him and into another bedroom. Is that correct? Correct. When did you do that? In November, the day after Thanksgiving. And then you continue to live there because you guys are in the middle of a lease, correct? How was it? Was it a little frosty, a little chilly in that house? Ah, uh, yes. It was uh, extremely, it got to a point where it was very unlivable. Um, and I had to make the decision to break the lease on my part and move out okay. because I just, I couldn't take it anymore. Plus, I had my younger daughter who was eight at the time living with us and I, I couldn't have her in that situation. Were you guys fighting in front of her? There was one incident where um, he insisted on wanting to argue with me in the kitchen and she was in the bedroom going to bed and he just was loud and saying things and she came out and got very, very upset and was crying and it was a whole situation and he, the next day I wake up and he had a letter on the counter apologizing to her. So, and that was honestly okay. my breaking point because I was like, I can't do this. I can't affect my child. Okay. Can I ask you, uh, other, other than that day where there was screaming on the other days, what was there? Was it, was, was there no talking? You could, neither of you talk to each other or how, how was the situation? We barely talked, um, he stayed upstairs for the most part. I was downstairs. Um, if we happened to cross paths because he was leaving or I was coming, um, we didn't really say much. Um, okay, so in March at some point, Mr. Timothy leaves on a trip. And what do you do? You move out. You clear out your stuff and your daughter and you move and go to live where? Um, actually, I didn't know that, you know, what his schedule was, if he was, you know, out of town or whatever. Um, I had made the decision after that incident with my daughter um, that I needed to get out because I couldn't expose her to any more hostile situations. Okay, um, that's fine, but you did it while he was out of town. You didn't tell him you were doing it. You, you, t Mr. Timothy, why don't I give you the floor a moment? How was it that she ended up leaving? I went to California with my grandson for a weekend, came back, the house was completely dark, all utilities were off and all her stuff and some of my stuff was gone. And did, had she texted you? Did she tell you? No, she never texted me. There was no forewarning when the utilities were going to be off or anything. I asked the landlord if she had communicated 
it's in text format and it's downloaded and the judge has it. So shake your head all you want. Um, I am the judge. I contacted. Oh, who are you talking? Well, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't talk to her. No, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, on March 4th, the landlord contacted me and asked why Amy hadn't paid her share of the rent. Like I was to know the landlord was aware that we were going through this issues because we have had group texts with the landlord regarding what was going on. Right. You had had group texts with the landlord where you were making the landlord into like, you know, Dr. Phil. I mean, you were including him in your arguments. There's texts, you know, Uh, about wanting space where you were in. I need space for my stocking. And then next thing you know, the landlord's getting brought into it. It was kind of weird. Uh, you know, I'm looking at it and I'm like, they're grown adults. It more than just that. Yeah, you're right. No, We're yeah, I know. I mean, you know, wouldn't it have been a better idea once the breakup happened for you to find a roommate and for you two to discuss how she was going to move out or for you to move out or for both of you to talk to the landlord and ask them to see if they could rent it out? I mean, rather than just think you're going to live together for another six, seven months like this? Originally, they were trying to communicate that with the landlord to get either one of us out or both of us out without it affecting our credit or future rentals. And the landlord wouldn't cooperate? At first, the landlord was like, sure, you can find someone to be a roommate. But then I guess she just had enough. So she said no. I don't know. All right. So you both end up breaking the lease, really, because you leave. And you lived there for how long, Mr. Timothy? I left after an eviction notice was put on the door. That's when I. When was the eviction notice put on the door? No, Um, I I, I mean that. I mean, you didn't stay there, though. You didn't stay there and pay the entire rent for the rest of the lease, right? No, I wasn't allowed to. From the landlord's perspective. Right. Okay. Correct. Right. No, I get it. I'm just saying, from the landlord's perspective, that that means you as a couple broke the lease. But in any event, so you get an eviction notice when? What day? I don't remember the exact date, but it was roughly seven to 10 days after. Correct. It was in March. Rent was due. Okay. Now, Ms. Amy, I'm trying to understand why everything wasn't resolved back then. You have a lawsuit today, and your lawsuit is entirely about utilities that, according to you, you say he owes you. Talk to me about that. Yes. Um, This was an ongoing issue from the moment I moved out of the bedroom. Um, he, it was a constant argument every month. I would leave copies of the bills on the counter, on the kitchen counter. Um, he would then write all over it, you know, nasty notes or just asking for more information about the bill. So then I would give him more of what he wanted. And I kept telling him, if you don't pay, I'm not paying and it will be turned off. Because if I pay the utility, what guarantee do I have? that he's going to pay his fair share, and then he's basically living in a house for utilities. Okay, here is, here is one. This appears to be a single-space typed note that you left him explaining the situation with the utilities, because I guess he was fighting paying for them. And then he exactly. writes on well, him, you're a liar who cheats. pay for them. Okay, can I ask you a question? Is this your handwriting? I can't see it, but yes, I did write on there. I didn't read the whole thing. Oh, I know you didn't because you wrote real big, not red. And then you wrote, you're a liar and a cheat and your words mean nothing. Proof, Amy, proof. What is that about? Why are you so angry with her? If you look at the utilities, just about every one of them has passed due that say that she paid them, but she paid them after the due date. And then you would have like, for instance, the water bill or the trash bill was supposed to be a quarterly bill. But we're getting three consecutive bills for uh, over $100. Why? Okay. Let's see. Okay. Here is a gas bill. In the February bill, there is a late pay charge. Of course, you did not pay your part of the December bill, right? So that would explain the late no, pay charge. No, I most charge certainly did you, pay my you, part of December's bill. I sent you proof of that payment. Did he, according to you, Ms. Amy, did he pay his part of the December bill? Uh, no, he did not. When did you pay her for the gas in December? December 26th. Okay. And how much did you pay? Half, forty seventy. Okay. And are you seeing uh, Ms. Amy that he paid you $40.70? 
Yes. And this was part of the issue every time he'd pay me, you know, in December, but he failed to look at the bill because that 4070 was for service period, October 30th through December 3rd. <laughs> okay. Well, no, that would make sense. Part of- that's inaccurate. This is, that's inaccurate. Okay. All right. I'm seeing a bill in December. It's dated mailed on December 5th, and it's past due after December. Are you looking at the bill, Mr. Timothy? It's past due after December 26th. Well, look at it. You end up paying exactly half of this bill. So what you paid in December is the bill that got mailed on December 5th, which is for usage from the month before. You get it? Okay, then look in the file. It's fine. This bill is paid. This bill is paid. Now we go to the next bill. It is fine. You're just not getting it. The next bill, disconnection notice. This is mailed on January 7th. You didn't pay the 8140 until there's a little notation here, which I take it was written by you. Is that correct, Amy? That says 11020 that you paid it. Right. Correct. But then that's why there's a late fee. So we're arguing about $4.27 and a late fee that he doesn't want to pay because he paid you his half on December 26th, which by the wow. way, as I showed you on the bill, is it, Mr. Timothy, are you listening? Are you going to give me a chance to are speak? You paid it on the, gonna... Are you going to listen though? You paid it on December 26th, which is the day that it was past due already. That's when you paid your half of the bill. And I had actually taken the late fee out when I told him his half. I said, I'll pay the late fee. Can I ask you something? When you end up moving out in March, I see Uh a series of texts between the two of you where he's insisting on paying the utilities he owes. And you're saying, forget it. I don't want anything. I don't pay her anything. Exactly. Right. What was that about, Ms. Amy? It, It wasn't the utilities. It was the deposit because I had... Um, told the landlord since I'm breaking the lease and uh, moving out that I forfeit my deposit. Well, to my surprise, she ended up texting us saying she's giving us our deposit back. And I said, well, I don't want it. I already considered it a loss. Just give it all to Timothy. And so she did. And he ended up walking away with an extra $1,300 of what I, you know, after she did the deductions. Like, uh, Mr. Timothy, you had you had each split the deposit, correct? Like each of you put up correct. 25, whatever? Well, according All to right. Amy on her text, March 30th, return the deposit to Timothy's name only as he paid it and the funds came from his account. So is she lying then or is she lying now? I stipulate that we both paid our share. Right. So you both paid your share. So she said that to the landlord because if she didn't, the landlord wouldn't write the check directly to you. And because she exactly. was... Moving I didn't out want the check and breaching written directly to me. I never asked for that. I didn't ask for the okay. deposit check to come to just me. No, she Can did. I speak? That's a volunteer on her part, not my part. Okay, so that means you ended up with an extra thirteen hundred dollars because, of course, she didn't pay March. So part of that went to pay March. So can I just ask you then why, if in the text you actually say that you d- insist on paying the utilities, will you not pay the utilities now? I never received the last month's bills. She says she sent me or served me with the demand payment. She never did. Prove it. Show me how you sent me this. I've not received anything. You can't pay I something that somebody doesn't tell you you owe it from- But what are you talking about? I just read the big typed note uh-huh. that she had left for you explaining absolutely every single thing. That wasn't And you wrote all over bill. it, cheater and a liar and I'm not reading it. That's it doesn't sound like she's bill. a jilted woman. It sounds like oh you're jilted. God. That's not I mean, you bill. seem really That's angry. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about- I know about it's not. I, have, I can't bill. see all the bills at once, my dear. I have to see them one by one. Tell me about the cable discussion you guys kept having over and over and over. Shed some light on that, Mr. Timothy. Up until the time she moved out of the room, we had a cable receiver in our shared bedroom. We broke up on the day after Thanksgiving, basically Thanksgiving. That whole story she told was a lie to begin with. But let's, whatever. What's the truth about that? It's actually been going on for the last couple of years. She wants to spend the holidays with her ex-in-law, her ex-mother-in-law, and her ex-husband. I wasn't invited. She's going. Matter of fact, technically, according to the story she told me, she was being paid to cook for her in-laws. 
Now, if you're trying to forge a life with a new partner, why are you going to your ex's house to cook dinner? Her excuse will be to spend time with my kids. Well, you have your own home to spend time with your kids on the holidays. Her kids now are like 20 and 19 or 21 and 19. They're not little eight-year-olds. Her then eight-year-old she's referencing is from another man. So why am I being left on holidays if we're supposed to be having a life together? Of course I'm going to be angry, wouldn't you? Yeah, and I might even be angry that she's spending it over there, except for that I understand the value of co-parenting and and the memories that you are making for a child who is 19 and 20. You think that there's no value to that, but are you a parent? Yeah, I am a parent. See, I couldn't spend time on the holidays with my kids. She expected me to go to her in-laws. That's house your choice. Her? Okay. Oh, so yeah, she did invite you. that's why I broke up with She her. did invite you then. No. Right, but she, she did, did invite, invite you then. Me. She expected you to go. <laughs> you just said she expected you, know you to go to your just into her in-laws her with her. favor like you're going to, and let's be done with this. You asked right, me a I'll question, you don't what, even Mr. let me Timothy. finish. You have a lot of anger issues. And I can oh, my only anger imagine is, what it was you're like. Going back to December. turn him off. I'm done with him. I'm done with him. He's just a woman hater who thinks that all women are just gonna just t- cut him off. I've had enough of him. That's right. In some ways, this whole Zoom thing is really good because we can turn the audio off, and then I don't have to hear this kind of disrespect. It's exceedingly simple. Here is him saying. What do I owe for utilities? It still needs to be to be paid, and I'm paying for it. I'm not going to feel like a horrible person because I expect something to be laid back, and you nor anyone else will say I didn't pay my share. This is March 31st when you've already moved out, so it's very clear that at that point, he owes you money, and he knows he owes you money, or he wouldn't have done that. And all of a sudden now he's arguing about how much money it is and saying things like, oh, there's past due from other houses and things, ridiculous things like that. When right here he's saying, I don't even know what I owe. You tell me what I owe. I've been through the bills. I understand that when you pay a bill on December 26th, you're paying November's bill that got mailed on December 5th. I am not confused. I also know that there is none so blind as he who will not see. And if when you explain everything, chapter, line, and verse... What he does is write all over your explanation, single space, saying, not red, you're a cheater and a liar, then he is not trying to understand the bill situation, okay? It is very obvious to me that he owes you the utilities. I would like to ask you a few questions about something that I'm going to show right now, because this is one of my favorite things all day. (laughs) What? on earth are you doing in his room? Oh, (laughs) Oh, that's terrible. (laughs) Um, It is terrible, isn't it? You go into the room and you just peek. Why did you go in? (laughs) I went in because he had something that we both had paid for and I was looking for it. And I knew he had it. Um, It was a liquid. It was a liquid. Um, A liquid what? For um, a vape. His weed. Okay. (laughs) No, not weed. vape? No, no, no. I promise. It wasn't weed. Okay. What was it? It, it, No, it was liquid because we made our own juice for the vape. It was a strawberry pineapple smoothie. Oh, for Um, vape. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so- So here um, you are. But why are you peeking? Did you realize he probably had a camera on you? Oh, I knew he did. So what are you doing right here? Like right now? What is it you're doing right now in this video? Like, why are you looking (laughs) around? I was just looking at, because right next to the bed there where I stopped is a dresser where he usually well, What are you doing in this closet? This what are you doing in his closet? I was looking for the juice. Okay. And he probably, he probably didn't show this to the end, but at the end, I saw the camera and I, you know, childishly gave him the finger. So <laughs> I knew he had the camera. Oh, I wish he had showed. I wish he had <laughs> shown that. I don't think he did. This is you know, this is reminding me of the Grinch who stole Christmas. Like you're just tiptoeing <laughs> inside to. Tur- I mean, what do you think the camera's going to do while you're doing that? It's going to catch you doing that. So it's just really funny yeah. to me. I don't know why you just keep poking your head in and looking. Did you think the camera was going to announce itself? It's like the weirdest thing. Yeah. All right. You probably shouldn't have been doing any of that, frankly. No. Right. I've been through the utilities. It was how many months of not paying the utilities? I guess since the first bills started to come in in December, covering the November bills, uh, covering the November usages, right? And that's why we're talking about December. 
because those are the payments that are made in December. They're covering the month before. All right. I'm finding in your favor in the amount of $842.10. Thank you. So the plaintiff has prevailed. She gets exactly what she was seeking, and the defendant is going to find out the hard way when he gets the uh, the judgment. Uh, you're getting the $842. Obviously, this is all over between the two of you, and I would imagine you're very glad of it. Am I right? Yes, very glad. <laughs> have you learned anything from this experience? Uh, yes, I have learned a lot. Um, I definitely will not be rushing to move in with anybody, and... Um, will have bills put in both names. I mean, yeah, it, it was it was pretty uh, crazy at the end. So I, I've definitely learned my lesson from it for sure. Well, good for you. Congratulations, <laughs> indeed. Thank you. All right, Harvey. Doug, we've talked about this before. I want to do it again. When you're in a relationship and you move in with somebody, you got to set the financial ground rules. And you got to put it in writing. I know that sounds uncomfortable, but you know what is more uncomfortable than putting it in writing? ending up in court with your ex. Hey, Judge Marilyn, do you pack for John? Thanks, from Kelly. Ah, oh, jeez. I used to. At the beginning, um, I don't know why. Why would I have ever done that ever, even 30 years ago? Uh, uh, yeah. But I did um, like to be helpful or to make sure. I, I don't to even- To be controlling. That's probably, <laughs> no, you're right. That probably is right. Like, I, you know, who knows? But I, I quickly stopped that once we had kids and I, I had to right. pack for other people. And um, but our packing style is wildly different. Oh, you think? Very different. You think? Yeah. If you open my suitcase next to your suitcase, my suitcase, stuff's just kind of chucked in there, right? Kind of haphazardly and usually not enough stuff. Yeah, that's and the key. It's <laughs> not enough stuff. Your suitcase, it's like. It's nerd city. It's like, oh, everything's labeled. Everything's covered in a, in a you know, a hairbrush cozy. That's and, not but, true. And you've got backups <laughs> for everything. If this could break, you're going to have something else. There's an I'm umbrella. I'm prepared. I'm There's prepared. a backup umbrella. Oh, wait, umbrella. you're going to make fun of me about the umbrella? You, you're, well, you're like caught unprepared all the time. When have I ever forgot something really important? Underwear? Well, you can get underwear in every major American right, city. Right, and we do. We have to right. stop and get underwear in every major city. Uh, That's exactly what we end up doing. I never feel like an important event. I never forgot something real. Your tie for the first Emmys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the tie. Yeah, that was a bad one. That was a bad one. Right. <laughs> we were about to walk for the first time in my life the red carpet. Right. And you realize you have no tie. That's which, like 20 years ago. Nobody right. remembers that anymore. No, no, I remember it. <laughs> yeah, it was a nightmare. Yeah. I would admit I was sweating a little, walking up and down Hollywood Boulevard trying to find a bow tie. Yeah, that didn't happen. Bow tie. Uh, somebody from the hotel ran up and down no, Hollywood. I was looking, too. I was you, looking, too? Yeah, oh. no, just around the near the hotel. Oh. But. <laughs>